Assalamu alaikum So today is Ramadan day 17 and it's early in the morning look at the sunrise it's beautiful there are beautiful colors and well today is uh, Ramadan day 17 and it is also the death anniversary of Mother Aisha Razilahu Talanha so we decided to dedicate our today's vlog to her in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the wives of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as the mothers of the believers. In Surah Al-Ihzab, in verse 6, it is said, The Prophet has a stronger affinity to the believers than they do themselves, and his wives are the mother, their mothers. As ordained by Allah, blood relatives are more entitled to inheritance than other believers and immigrants. Unless you want to show kindness to your close associates through be bequest. This is decreed in the record. Aisha was the third and youngest wife of the Prophet Muhammad She was the daughter of the closest man to the Prophet that is Abu Bakr Siddiq About her early life we know very little. She was born in Mecca. She was the daughter of Abu Bakr and Umm Ruman. After the death of Hatijah Hawla bin Hakim suggested the Prophet to marry Aisha the Prophet ﷺ engaged her and Sauda Anha at the same time, but he ﷺ married her later. She showed the world how a woman could be more knowledgeable than a man, politician or warrior 14 centuries ago. She had a brilliant mind and a remarkable memory. She contributed to spread the message of the Prophet ﷺ and served the Muslim community for 44 years after the Prophet ﷺ's death. She was involved in religious matters and politician events as well. She is also known for narrating 2,210 hadith. She was the teacher of the Sahaba as well. She is also one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ who memorized the Holy Quran. In Islamic history, she stands on top on the top of Islamic scholars. Aisha was known as an intelligent woman who debated law with male companions. As al Bayri said, if we compared Aisha's knowledge to all women, Aisha would surpass them. Hishan ibn Urwa, a prominent narrator of Hadith, said, I have never, never seen anyone who could have knowledge of an ayah, Quranic verse, an obligatory act, a sunnah act, poetry, history, lineage, judgment, or medicine better than Aisha Razilaho Talanha. I once asked her, what about medicine? How did you learn it, aunt? She said, she Razilaho Talanha said, when I was sick, the Prophet prescribed treatment for me as he did when the people became ill. I also heard the people prescribing treatment to each other. Thereby, I memorized such prescriptions. There are many blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which distinguish Aisha Razilakhotalanha from all other women. The angel Jibreel showed her image wrapped in green silk to the Prophet ﷺ and told him ﷺ that this is the picture of the lady chosen by Allah to be his wife both in this world and the next. She was the only wife of the Prophet ﷺ who had not been previously married. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ died in her room, in her arms, and he ﷺ was buried in her room as well. She was born as a Muslim and had been brought up in a pure environment. Among her new, unique characteristics is that the Prophet ﷺ 
did not receive revelation in the bed of any of his wives apart from Asha radiallahu anha she was the most beloved and favorite wife of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and aisha radiallahu anha had a strong intellectual relationship He sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam valued her keen memory and intelligence and so instructed his companions to draw some of their religious practices from her. She was an ideal wife. She relieved the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam in his grief and suffering through the hardships of life and whenever he sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam faced opposite faced opposition in spreading the message of Allah. She was interested in learning from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Therefore, she became so knowledgeable that she was able to teach men and was a source of authorization and documentation in hadith transmissions. She contributed scholarly intellect to the development of Islam. She was given the title of Al-Siddiqa, meaning the one who affirms the truth. Aisha radiallahu anha was known for her expertise in the Quran, shares of inheritance, lawful and unlawful matters, poetry, Arab li- Arabic literature, Arab history, genealogy and general medicine. Her intellectual uh, contributions regarding the verbal texts of Islam were in the time to transcribe into written form, becoming the official history of Islam. After the death of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam Aisha was regarded as the most reliable source in the teachings of hadith Aisha radiallahu anha's authentication of Muhammad's ways of prayer and his recitation of Quran allowed for the development of knowledge of his sunnah of praying and regarding verses of the Quran During her entire life she was a strong advocate for the education education of islamic women especially in law and the teachings of islam she was known for establishing the first madrasa for women in her home attending aisha radiallahu anha's classes were various family relatives orphan children and sahabas aisha radiallahu anha died in her home in madina on the 17th of ramadan 58 Al Hijri She was 67 years old Abu Huraira led her funeral prayer after the tahajjud that that is the night prayer and she was buried at Jannat al Baqi There is a lot to say about her may Allah have mercy and be pleased with her amen So today's Revive Us Sunnah is also about Aisha radiallahu anha. We are reviving her teachings and as she followed the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, uh, this would be also considered as sunnah. There is a hadith narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said, "Many men reach perfection, but none among the women reach the perfection except Mary the daughter of Imran and Asya Pharaoh's wife and the superiority of Aisha to other women is like the superiority of Sari to other kinds of food So guys it's time for daily calendar and well today we're on day 17 and today we have these um battery shaped um chocolates <laughs> and i i think they are different flavors i don't know <laughs> but well it seems like this uh this is white chocolate this is normal you know chocolate and milk uh, we're going to leave them here or moving on to our segment the picture of the day and the picture of the day So now we start with the picture of the day and I see a honey and when I don't know 
Um, <clears throat> as far as I know, there is a whole chapter, a whole surah in the Quran dedicated to honeybees. The chapter's name is also the bee. I think so. Um, <clears throat> and that's all I know. So let's see the this picture shows a honeybee. Bees are amazing creation of Allah and they have been given a distinct honor. Bees receive revelation, a direct command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah An-Nahl, the bees, is the 16th chapter, chapter of the Holy Quran. It's na- it's, it is named after honey bees. The Quran says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired the bees to build their hives in hills, on trees, and close to human beings. From their body comes a drink of varying colors, which is healing for human beings. That is honey. So in Surah Nahal, verse 68, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and your Lord inspired the bees. Make your homes in the mountain trees and in what people construct. And feed from the flower any fruit of you, please. And follow the ways your Lord has made easy for you. From their bellies comes forth liquid of varying colors in which there is healing for people. Surely in this is a sign for those who reflect. Bees also teaches us to to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bees are obedient creatures and spend their lives doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded, building homes and making honey to benefit humans. They follow the task given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without diverging from their given roles. Today's Zikr is, Our Lord, we believe in what you have revealed and we follow the messenger. Then write us down among those who bear witness. This was narrated in al Imran in verse uh, 53 in chapter 3. So we should repeat the dhikr and uh, you know incorporate this in our daily lives. Don't forget to give a like, subscribe, ring the bell, and comment below as well. And stay tuned for our next video. We'll, um, this is the end of this one. So uh, stay in touch. Bye. Bye.